Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be creating a tier list featuring some of the most common Adobe alternatives and I'll be doing a combination of free alternatives as well as some commercial alternatives. With that being said, let's start off with WordPress which is a CMS or content management system and it is made to design websites. Adobe does have the Adobe Experience Manager so this replaces the need for that and I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. WordPress is an S tier piece of software because it is the industry standard when it it comes to designing websites. That is especially true if you want to design websites without coding. However, you can also use code to put together very custom websites. And WordPress is the most popular CMS platform in the world. It's used by huge companies. It's very stable, it's very consistent. It has a ton of developer activity lots of third-party plugins and themes developed for it, so a lot of support around it. So yeah, in my opinion, WordPress is a no-brainer. It is an S-tier piece of software. So next up, we have GIMP, and GIMP is going to primarily be an alternative for Photoshop. It is a photo editor. It's got tons of photo manipulation features. So when it comes to ranking GIMP, there's lots to think about. GIMP is by far the best free photo editing alternative to Photoshop. It has tons of great tools for basic photo editing like color correction levels, curves. You can also sharpen your photos. There's lots of great photo manipulation tools like the heel tool. In its heyday, GIMP did have a ton of developer activity. However, that's kind of fallen off a little bit in the last few years. And that has led to the community shrinking a little bit, if not just staying stagnant. But overall, GIMP is a great piece of software. It is stable when you use it. It can be a little buggy if you're using development versions, but the stable versions usually are pretty bug free. GIMP's main weakness is that it has fallen so far behind on things that Photoshop has really made standard with photo editors, such as adjustment layers, non-destructive editing, smart objects, vector shape tools. GIMP still does not have any of these right now. And then you add on top of that AI. So GIMP does not have an AI implementation. It does use some third-party plugins that can do some AI-like things, like the Resynthesizer plugin, but as of right now, nothing built in. So I think at the present, GIMP has slipped down to a B-tier software. I think at one point it was A-tier, but just over the years, as it's fallen more and more behind Photoshop, it's slipped down to a B. It can get back up to A if it implements all those features I just mentioned. So moving on, we have Blender. And Blender, I'm not gonna beat around the bush again, so I'm just gonna put this as an S tier. Blender is constantly in development, constantly putting out new versions. It's very innovative, it's an industry disruptor. I think even companies like Adobe have recognized that and that's why they contribute to this software. Adobe has donated money to Blender. And Blender is used for things like 3D animation, sculpting, it can even be used for video production, although it's not primarily a video editor. And while Blender is kind of its own program, I think the programs that it is most known for replacing is going to be things like After Effects, Cinema 4D, and in some cases, Premiere Pro. If you follow free and open source software on social media, you'll constantly see updates from the Blender community with things like new Blender materials, shaders, different types of physics you can add to Blender. So there's all sorts of third-party add-ons that are constantly being developed. And there are tons of creators out there who know way more about Blender than I do. But from my understanding, Blender is an S tier piece of software. Next up we have Darktable. So Darktable is raw processing software. It is most similar to Lightroom. It has a lot of great features for processing raw images. It is very scientifically based. You can get some great colors out of your photos with it. It has a pretty steep learning curve, especially compared to Lightroom, which just uses really a bunch of sliders to make adjustments. Darktable is going to use a lot more graphs and curves and manual number adjustments, although they have made more of a push to introduce more sliders to make it a little bit easier to use. But once you do conquer that learning curve, you can get some great results out of your images. So for those reasons, I'm going to put Darktable as a B tier software. If it did improve its UI and UX, I would put it up to an A. But for now, Darktable is B tier. So moving on, we have Scribus, and Scribus is going to be a desktop publishing software. So a lot of people cite this as being a potential replacement for InDesign. And I think when you look at this software directly next to InDesign, it doesn't really hold up. I just feel like the UI and UX could be updated and there could be a lot more new features added to this. And as far as I know, there's not a ton of new development coming out of this. So for all those reasons, I'm gonna put this as a D tier software. Again, I'm not trying to knock this or have any ill will against Scribus. So let's move on here to Krita. 
So Krita is a digital painting software. It's kind of in a league of its own in terms of being a digital painting software. I mean, Adobe Photoshop has a lot of digital painting features, but none of them on the level that Krita has. There are some very basic photo editing and photo adjustment features in Krita, but if you are a digital artist and you're just looking to paint your own works, Krita has made some huge strides in terms of its UI and UX. It has some really unique and cool features like its little carousel for selecting different brush types and it has a lot of great textures and I think it really is a consistent product it's a stable product and its community seems to constantly be putting out resources and add-ons like new brushes for that reason I'm gonna put Krita as an A tier software again that is as a digital painting software but for now a very respectable A tier so next up we have PenPot and PenPot is going to be a UI UX prototyping tool very similar to Figma. So Figma of course was recently acquired by Adobe which caused people to go scrambling for some sort of alternative to Figma because they didn't want to get sucked into the Adobe universe. Naturally a lot of people gravitated towards PenPot and they realized PenPot is a really viable piece of software. And while PenPot is relatively new, it has seen a lot of developer activity, so there's been a lot of new great features added. I think the built-in features do exactly what you expect them to do, and there's a lot of support behind PenPot now with Figma being acquired by Adobe. So if you look at their website and you scroll down here to the organizations that are using PenPot, you've got people like Blender, Mozilla, Fedora, MIT, NYU, Fujitsu. So obviously there's been some great adoption here. I don't think PenPot is the industry standard, so I can't put it as an S tier. That still belongs to Figma. However, I will put this as an A tier piece of software, and I think PenPot has a great future ahead of it. So let's move on here to DaVinci Resolve. This is going to be a video editor. This is not free and open source software. It is going to be a video software developed by Blackmagic, the company that makes cameras. This software is often cited as a replacement for Premiere Pro. And as far as free software goes, this is really the only replacement you'll find for Premiere Pro in my opinion. I mean, there's other free and open source software like OpenShot or Olive, but I just think those are too inconsistent and lack too many features in my opinion. I think DaVinci Resolve is the only industry standard alternative. I think it does offer a lot of the same features Premiere Pro does, and it also does its own thing very well, almost like a Premiere Pro in an alternate universe. And there's always lots of development going on around DaVinci Resolve Resolve and a lot of third-party add-ons. So for that reason, I'm going to put DaVinci Resolve as S tier. So moving on, we have Drupal. Drupal is another CMS or content management system similar to WordPress. I have used Drupal very sparingly over the years. However, from what I understand from the general web design and development community is that Drupal is very good like WordPress. Maybe not quite as good as WordPress, not quite as many third-party plugins or themes you can download. The learning curve is a little steeper, although there are a ton of big companies that use Drupal. It seems to have great security. And yes, like WordPress, it is free and open source software. But from my understanding, and again, this is just from hearing from others, I would say Drupal is A tier software. The last free software I'll cover for this video is Inkscape. Inkscape is what I'm using right now. It is a scalable vector graphics software, most similar to Illustrator. Inkscape is an interesting case because in my eyes, it is one of the only alternatives available for Illustrator. There's something about vector graphics software that is just not easy to replicate or develop from scratch. And in that sense, Inkscape has done a great job. I think it's a great piece of software. It has tons of new features, especially with the most recent Inkscape 1.2 and Inkscape 1.3 releases. Most notably, it has introduced some key features like the page tool which is most similar to the artboard tool and its own shape builder tool which is actually pretty surprising that is a great feature Inkscape can be a little unstable so I think out of all of these programs that I have listed here Inkscape does tend to crash the most in my personal experience I think if Inkscape became more stable and became more predictable it could very easily be an A tier piece of software but because of those stability issues, I do regretfully have to put Inkscape here as C tier software. And part of me wants to just bring this up to the B tier because I do feel like it could easily be seen as a B tier software. Its UI is better than dark tables, for example. But another thing it lacks is CMYK features. It doesn't really have those. And so while I'm fighting to bring this higher, I'm just gonna keep it as a C tier for now. 
So those were the free alternatives to Adobe software. Now let's move on to some of the commercial alternatives. So the two big ones are gonna be Affinity by Serif and Canva. So starting with Affinity by Serif, this company, which is a British company, offers Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Affinity Publisher. So the three of them together are sometimes referred to as the Affinity Trinity. All three of them offer pretty much everything that their Adobe counterparts offer besides AI at this point. So Affinity Photo, which is most similar to Photoshop, is going to pretty much have all of the Photoshop features. The main difference being that Photoshop does still have much better quick photo manipulation tools, smart photo manipulation tools like background removal removal or subject selection. But Affinity Photo does have some really great features like its develop persona for editing raw images. It has a panoramic stitcher. You can focus stack your images as well as do some exposure blending. And with Affinity Designer, you're basically going to get all the same tools you would get out of Adobe Illustrator. And it even has some of its own unique features, much like Affinity Photo. It has multiple personas. So there's a pixel persona, for example, where you can do some basic photo manipulation. And as far as I understand it, Affinity Publisher, which is most similar to Adobe InDesign, is pretty even with InDesign in terms of the features it offers. And I think all of the Affinity products offer a great UI UX. Plus Affinity Publisher just got a new feature called Studio Link, where you can jump between all three programs, all from within Affinity Publisher. And so while there is a bit of a learning curve, overall, it is pretty intuitive. So for all those reasons, I'm going to place Affinity by Serif here in the A tier. Last but not least, that leads us to Canva. And Canva is a very interesting case because it's created its own browser-based category of content creation and design. It's basically made for marketers and content creators who are not design savvy or not designers. At least that's how it started. It does have a freemium model, so it offers some free features. And then if you want additional features or additional templates, you have to sign up for Canva Pro. Canva offers collaboration features for Teams, which is becoming very popular in modern software. It's also successfully implemented some AI features and it's even developed its own video editor and desktop app. So it's just constantly expanding its audience, expanding its market. I personally don't use Canva. I'm not a big fan of Canva, but I know a lot of people are, including a lot of professionals. So for all those reasons, I'm gonna place Canva as an S tier creative app. So there's my tier list. I feel like looking at this thing, I could spend all day just rearranging these apps, changing my mind. But what do you guys think? Where would you rank this software? Which rankings did I get wrong? Which rankings did I get right? Let me know in the comments. But that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.